At the end of every season, many sports give out awards for the best players that year. But for some reason, Cubing doesn't have this. So let's fix that by giving out my own version of these awards. I'm going to give out three types of awards. Most Improved Player, Rookie of the Year, and Player of the Year, or MVP. We'll also have a Hall of Fame for the greatest players of all time. But how will I decide that? With statistics. To judge how well Cuba does during a year, I'll use four factors. World Records, Continental Records, World Championship Podiums, and Continental Championship Podiums. Here's the point values I assign to each. Average is more skill-based, so it gives more points. World titles and records are much harder to get, so they also get more points. In addition, 2 3 records and championship podiums double the point, since it is the main event. With this scoring system, we can tally up the score for every cuber that year. The player of the year will be the cuber with the most points. The rookie of the year will be the cuber with the most points that went to their first competition that year or the previous year. And finally, the most improved player is the cuber who had the best improvement from their score last year to this year. So let's give out some awards starting with 1982. This is the first ever year of competitions, so it wasn't that interesting. First we have Min Tai. Unsurprisingly, Rookie of the Year, Most Improved Player, and MVP are all the same. In 2003, however, new events were introduced. But first place is Dan Knights, who won the World Championship for 2 3 However, tied with him for second place was Job, who won Clock, Magic, and Master Magic. And as expected, these rankings are all the same for Rookie of the Year, Most Improved Player, and MVP. In 2004, the Rookie of the Year would be Shotoro Makazumi. Even with no championship medals, he's gotten 12 world records. Most of them in duet 3, but also in blindfolded and one-handed. For most approved though, he actually went second, and first was Stefan Pachman. This is because Stefan had a score of 0 last year, whereas Sotoro had a score of 10, which made his improvement a bit less impressive. Stefan also had a great year. At the European Championships, he won both clock and 5 5 blindfolded, and got second in magic and one-handed. But for MVP, the ranking is the exact same as the Rookie of the Year rankings, because everyone's a rookie. However, in 2005, things would get a lot closer. Rookie of the Year was won by Gunnar Krig, who had a score of 89. Most of this came from his world records, which he got in 2x2 and Pyramings. Lane Lowe was not far behind though at 85 with his blindfolded records. The most improved player, however, was Ryan Patricio, jumping from a score of 0 last year to a score of 72. His score mainly came from his skill at one-handed solving, getting first place at the World Championship and getting several world records in this event. But the MVP was Stefan Pachman. The main thing that helped was his amazing performance at the World Championship, getting first in Clock, Mega Minx, and Master Magic, and second at Magic. He also got a ton of records in these events. This was a pretty interesting year, and it's the first time that the most improved player, the Rookie of the Year, and MVP are all different people. But this can't be said about the next year, in 2006. The Rookie of the Year was Ansi van Halle. He did well at the European Championships, being first at Feet, second in One-Handed, and third in Tibet 3. And he also got quite a few world records in these events. For most improved player, the list is almost exactly the same, and once again, NC is on top. However, was his score of 83 good enough to win MVP? Yes, and he actually sweeps all the awards for 2006. That was pretty close, but in 2007, it's not that close. Rookie of the year is Matias Kuti with a score of 230, which is a huge jump. He had world records in Master Magic, Magic, Square 1, Clock, 5x5, 4x4, and 2x2, and podium in all those events at the World Championship. Pretty impressive. But most improved would be Emil Kampian. Even though he had no world records, he had a ton of continental records. But regardless, MVP still has to be Matias Kuti, with his 230 points. And Eric Akerzak is pretty close, so we'll see if he has a comeback here next year. But in 2008, the Rookie of the Year has to be Yu Nakajima. It seemed like he came out of nowhere, but he just dominated world records in one-handed and duet 3. But the most improved player was Dan Cohen. He was starting to establish himself for being good at big cubes, getting the world record for 4x4 and 5x5, as well as a ton of continental records in these big cube events. But the MVP this year was Eric Akersdijk, who had a comeback year with an insane 210 points. He dominated the European Championship, winning Feet, Mega Minx, 5x5, and 4x4, while also almost winning 2x3. He also broke records in Mega Minx, 5x5, 4x4, 2x2, and 2x3, with his Fabian 7.08, the Rubik's Cube world record that will last for such a long time. 2009 saw the rise of Dean Beardsley, who won the Rookie of the Year. One person you'll notice is Felix Zemdegs, who doesn't quite win Rookie of the Year this year. But he will have one more chance to win it next year, so let's see if he does. Most improved still goes to Dean Beardsley. But there's also an impressive showing from Mikhail Hausjuk, who jumped from a score of 3 to 124. A big factor was his impressive showing at Big Cubes, getting 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in 7x7, 6x6, and 5x5, and getting many records in those events. But that was only enough to put him in 3rd for MVP. Second was Eric Akersdijk, but first was Dan Cohen, with an amazing score of 233. He performed amazingly at the World Championships, 
getting first in five and six, getting third in seven by seven, and getting second in square one. He also got world records in all of those events, as well as a ton of other continental records. But 2010 was the year of one person, Felix Zemdegs. He wins work of the year with a score of 443, which I think is like triple of any other rookie. He fills the statue with 11 gold medals, almost 20 world records, and almost 60 continental records. That's absolutely insane. He also wins most improved player. Even though his last score was 36, this is still a crazy jump in rankings. But being the young lead does get second place, with some score one world records. MVP once again is not even close, but there are still some familiar names here, like Mikhail Hajduk, Eric Agersteig, and Ro Hester. The 2011 Rookie of the Year will be Zane Carney, and I think that's the third time in a row that this award is given to someone from Oceania. This is mostly because of his records in 3 and 5 blind, as well as his world record in 3 by 3 multi blind. Ernie Pogni is not that far behind with his world records in Master Magic. Most improved, however, goes to Kevin Hayes. He had a pretty solid year with world records in 6x6, and he got second at Worlds for semi 7. But you can't beat Felix Zemdex, who somehow improved his score all the way to 470. Although he did underperform in 2x3 at the World Championships, he won pretty much the rest of the events, like 2x2, 4x4, 5x5, and 6x6, and got a ton more world records. Once again, no one's even close to him. And we'll see how far this dominance goes. The 2012 Rookie of the Year will be Marcin, who had world records in multi blind, and also getting second in multi blind and 2x3 blindfolded at the European Championships. Most improved has to go to Nintendo. He was dominant this year in semi 7 getting a total of 11 world records. He also got continental records in 6, 7, and 1-handed. But unsurprisingly, Felix is MVP once again. However, not by much. His score got a lot lower at a score of 140, so that's pretty close to Lin Chen's 131. And he actually had less world records than Lin Chen. And it was the continental records that actually made up for his score. In 2013, the Rookie of the Year was Connor Cronin, with a score of 32. He also wins Most Improved. Another impressive showing though was Noah Arthurs, who got two podiums at the World Championship. One in 4 blind and one in multi blind. But once again, Felix is MVP. He finally redeemed himself by winning 2x3, as well as 4x4 and one handed. But there are also some pretty impressive showings from this list. Marcel Andre did pretty well at blind for the world championships. Kevin Hayes did really well in big cubes. And Matt's Falk at the bottom got second in 2x3. The next year, Connor Cronin wins Rookie of the Year again. He had 40 continental records in a lot more events. Jonathan Klosko gets second though with his world records in Scoop, which was actually just added this year. There are also some familiar names here, like Kai Jun Lin in Blind and Sung Hik Nam. But for most improved, it has to go to John Klosko, with his several records in Scoop. Oliver Frost also had a pretty good year with Big Blind, and there are a few more familiar names here. Lucas Eder got a few 2 2 world records, which were pretty huge. And there are two more Scoobers on this list, Brandon Harnish and Walker Welch. But once again, MVP goes to Felix Zemdix. It does get a bit closer with Connor Cronin with all of his CRs, but Felix does get enough records to secure yet another MVP. In 2015, Pedro wins the Rookie of the Year with a ton of continental records, mostly in big cubes. But once again, Kevin Hayes actually wins most improved. 2014 was a bit of a slower year for Kevin Hayes as he didn't get any records. But in 2015, he actually has a pretty good year. First place in 7 and 6 at the World Championships and second at 5x5. And also several world records in 6 and 7. But that doesn't change the fact that Felix is MVP once again. He got a ton of records and performed really well at the World Championships. He won 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 handed while getting second in 6, 7 Mega Minks. One of the best World Championship performances ever. But let's see how long he can hold on to this. In 2016, Pedro Alejandro wins Rookie of the Year again with a score of 40. But in second place is Nicholas Nang. He came out of nowhere getting the Mega Minks World Record single, as well as two continental records for Mega Minks average. But for most improved player, that goes to yet another New Yorker, Brandon Lin who got a score of 28, with his several records in square one. There are a few pretty familiar names here though. Max Park gets second this year, with his first world record in one-handed, and Juan Pablo Honki also had a really good year, with world records in Mega Minx. But for MVP, you guessed it, it's once again Felix Zemdegs. Six gold medals and a silver, and just a ton of records. Kai Jolin is just a bit behind, but it's hard to compete with the greatest keeper of all time. The rookie of the year in 2017 was Timon Kloczynski, which is quite a familiar name, but not for the reason you think. He actually got the world record average in Pyraminx. Not far behind is also Ben Kayo, who also got a world record in Pyraminx with a score of 10. The rankings for most improved player was actually pretty stacked. After a dry 2016 with no records, John and Klosko comes back with two of record in Skew. Ishan Agarwal is pretty close behind though, with his 22 points from 3 blind solving, and getting second at Worlds. But there's so many other familiar names here. Felix has a monster year almost doubling his points. Sung Bum Cho gets the world record single, and so does Patrick Pons. Max Park also has a pretty good year, and so does Jack Kai. 
Obviously, MVP goes to Felix again. The World Championships didn't go the best for him, but still really solid performance. First in 5 and 7, second in 6x6, six six, one handed in a Mega Minx, and third in 4x4. Four four. However, he didn't podium 3x3 three three because Max Park actually won that. Even though he won World Champion, it's hard to beat 26 world records in one year. But with 2018 being Max Park's year, first for Rookie of the Year though, Yun Hao Lu wins, with his very impressive clock world records. However, most improved goes to Stanley Chapel, who broke 5 world records in Big Blind. Another person on this list who was pretty close was Rasmus, getting a lot of those points from his square one performances. But MVP this year, surprisingly, is not Felix. Felix is in second with 126, but first is actually Max Park. And this was kind of the beginning of the end for Felix. Max got an insane 26 world records in one handed, 7x7, 6x6, 5x5, and 4x4. He also had great performances at the Asian Championships, beating Felix in most of the events, like 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, and 6x6. In 2019, the rookie of the year was Ihik Human Paul, who got a couple of blindfolded records, but tied was Zane Kanani. Even though he had no records this year, it was still impressive for him to get third place at the World Championships for 2x2 two two in his second year of competing. Most improved player was Sean Patrick Villanueva. Not only to get second place at the World Championships, which is pretty insane, he also got the 3 3 Asian record with a sub 6 average. But MVP for this year was pretty surprising. No, it's not Sebastian, it's not Juan, it's not Graham, it's not Kiron, it's not Felix, it's not Max. It's actually Stanley Chapel, who had a pretty crazy 2019. He had 16 world records in Big Blind, which were crazy, and he won 4 and 5 blind at Worlds. Max Park did have an amazing showing at Worlds, getting 5 gold medals, but this was the year that he didn't even podium in 2 3 And this is the year that Felix kind of falls off. He did have 2 world record averages and some continental records, but he only had 1 bronze medal at the World Championships which was not exactly what he was hoping for. 2020 was COVID year, so this might be a bit boring, but Rookie of the Year, there's only one person, it's Dwayne Ramos. I thought it was in one-handed, but apparently he got the Skub OCR. Most improved goes to Ryan Pinheri, who got continental records in 6, 7, and clock. However, not far behind was Kel Schoen, who got the fewest removes world record average of 21. But the MVP of this year goes back to Max Park. 50 points is not that impressive, but the year was cut short by COVID. Before the pandemic, however, he was able to sneak in records of 5x5, 6x6, and 7x7. Right after COVID, it was a similar idea. Not many rookies, but Michael Tripodi gets Rookie of the Year with two continental records in multi-blind. However, for most improved, it was actually a pretty stacked ranking. First place was Zane Kanani, who was dominating 2x2 world records, getting 3 this year. He also had a couple of continental records in Scoop. However, Rei Hong Shu was not that far behind, with only one point below him. This was mainly from his 2x2 world record average, which broke Felix's famous record. But there were a ton of other names here, like Tommy Cherry, who was getting really good at blind, Timon from his domination of big cubes in Europe, then there's also David and Samir, who both got world record averages in square one. MVP this year is also tied between Max Park and Timon. Even though Max Park had more world records, Timon made up for it for a ton of continental records. In 2022, Michael Tripodi won rookie of the year again, but not far behind is Sebastian Lee, who got first in Pyramix at the Oceanic Championships, and also Brendan Dunnigan, who got the clock CR average. The most improved player, however, was Daniel Rush, who had an insane 20 continental records. But there were a lot of other great picks on this list. Patrick Ponce did actually really well. He won the European Championships. He also got two world records in one-handed. Caleb Trofford also had a pretty good year, getting a ton of clock CR averages and the world record average eventually. But the MVP, once again, is Max Park, with a score of 248. And this is with him missing North American Championships. If he didn't miss that competition, he would have a ton more points. There are still lots of other great solvers on this list. Zane added 6 more world records with Skube and 2x2, and Timon was still doing Timon things. Finally, we're in 2023. Rookie of the year is going to be Daniel Partridge. This year, he broke the continental records for Pyramix. However, this guy is pretty insane in pretty much every event. Most improved player has to go to Yu Hang Wang though. I think a lot of people forgot how unknown he was until this year, but he pulled up this year with a score of 76. With 2 world record averages in DB3, 3 CR averages, and 2nd place at Worlds. Just barely missing 1st place. There are some other pretty good picks here though. Ezra got 3 world records in Pyramix average. Queen Ning Huang became Pyramix world champion out of nowhere. Nicholas also got the clock world record out of nowhere. And JD Pengni also had a really good year. With tons of CRs and 2 world records in fewest moves. He also got 1st place at the World Championships for this event. But MVP still has to go to Max Park. Yes, he did kind of underperform in some events at Worlds but he did win 2 3 On top of that, he also had 9 records this year. There were also many other great candidates this year. Tommy Cherry did pretty well with 2 world titles and 5 world records. Leandro Martin Lopez had an insane 8 world records this year. 
Team 1 had no world records, but he had a fantastic performance at Worlds, winning two golds, and Stanley also had an incredible year, winning two golds, a bronze, and having three world records. Finally, for keeping Hall of Fame, here's the top 10, and this pretty much shows why Felix Zemnex is the GOAT. A score of 2,617, that's over double of Max Park. 36 major gold medals, a ridiculous amount of records, Rookie of the Year, Most Improved Player, and 8 MVPs. There's a reason why he's at the top. Most of these people also have pretty old IDs, with the newest of them being Stanley Chapel from 2016. So I'm curious how this list will evolve over time, and if any up and coming cubers can crack this list. But yeah, thanks for watching this video, it took a ton of time to make, and I hope you enjoyed it.